As well as doing the tungsten uh, torches or flashlights at Poundland, they also uh, do LED ones from time to time, and this is one of them. <clears throat> and it, the technology used to build these is varied. Uh, the first ones were six LED, I think. Then there was a one LED version, the reflector, and now this is a three LED version. And it used to be you could unscrew the front of the barrel and take the lens and all the LED assembly out and it was quite easy to modify, put new LEDs in. But this is very different, this one. It's, I think it's the first of this type I've seen. The other ones had a circuit board, as this one does as well, and they relied on an extended thread on the aluminium barrel actually screwing right up hard against the back of the circuit board. And the aluminium against the solder didn't make a very good connection. It just seemed to be, go very intermittent. But again, this is different. And to open it, and I've already opened it because it turned out to be very hard to get open. It's got this plastic um, lens in the front, a, a disc that must actually be pressed in after manufacture, just physically pressed in and lock into a slight groove in here. Very hard to go. I had to actually uh, punch a hole through it and then lever it out to get it out, so not so easy for hacking. However, once you've got it out, the circuit board with a spring for the positive connection um, comes out and then to make the negative connection onto the body there's this gold coloured spring which is uh, it sticks to a magnet so it's obviously a treated steel in some way maybe they've uh, plated it with a sort of, sort of like a brass or or gold molecular gold finish not 100% sure but it now makes the connection between the aluminium, the aluminium shell and the edge of the circuit board. And all it's doing is just making connection onto these little square pads around the edge. And there is a resistor, as there often is with these ones, but when you consider that there's three LEDs, and I would typically say, you know, ideally it'd be, the resistor would be chosen to pass about 60 milliamps, so there's be 20 milliamps per LED at full battery voltage. But um, they've really chosen a very low resistor here. They've chosen 1.5 ohms. And if you consider that the LEDs are typically about 3 volts forward voltage and the battery, uh, a fresh set of batteries will be uh, 4.5 volts, that's uh, 1.5 to drop uh, divided by um, I equals V over R, which is also 1.5, it's going to pass an amp, and divided by 3, that's going to be hundreds of milliamps these LEDs are being run at. So, um, yeah, it was bright, but I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't put my money on this lasting all that long. Although, having said that, maybe I'll just give it a soak test and see. It'll also reduce its efficiency somewhat. But, um, the construction's reasonable enough. Um, Apart from that resistor, I think, you know, I'd even chosen a, a, a 15 ohm resistor would have been a much better choice. I wonder if it's a mistake or they, they're just really hamming the LEDs deliberately. But yeah, it's a nice enough design. It's the usual style. The, these bodies are quite useful for other things. Although, ha having said that, I do prefer if we're going to use it as a battery pack, and I've got one in the garden testing and has been tested for some long time, um, I do prefer the Tungsten version because. Um, they have two little holes for the lamp that you can whip the lamp out and you can just stick leads down the end of it. And this one doesn't really offer that because it's only uh, switching the positive through that onto a metal plate at the back. So yeah, uh, mixed thoughts about this one. Um, it's not one I'd choose to buy any more of because it's not very hackable and it seems to be really hammering the LEDs. So not a very good torch I'm afraid.